Hey everyone, welcome to another dividend stock investing video. In the video today, I am going to analyze a spin off that I believe is trading at deep discount value. This spin off has been ignored by the investing community. I think a lot of investors don't like this spin off because of the particular sector or industry in which it has focus. Personally, I think that industry has a lot of promise. I want to go through Orion Office. This is a spinoff from Realty Income, the monthly dividend company. And so far, Orion Office has been trending down. I want to show you in the video today, though, why I think it's a value and why I think it could be yielding over 8% on cost within just a few years here. They just reinstated their initial dividend. It's kind of low, but I see an opportunity for Orion Office to increase the dividend over time. Now here on my channel over the years, I have analyzed a variety of spin-offs. I like investing in spin-offs because my favorite investor of all time, Peter Lynch, he really opened my eyes to the opportunity that can be there with spin-offs because a lot of investors just sell the spin-offs, a lot of investors ignore them, and it can create opportunity. I have experienced that opportunity firsthand with Carrier and Otis, the spin-offs from United Technologies, now called Raytheon Technologies. I also like spin-offs Beatrice and Kindrel, Beatrice from Pfizer, Kindrel from IBM, although those two so far have been lackluster in terms of performance, but over the long run, we shall see. I think there's still a lot of opportunity and value that I see with both of those companies. So far, Orion has been trading similarly to Beatrice and Kindrel. The trading results have been trending down. It's been lackluster, but this can create a lot of opportunity for long-term investors who have a long time horizon, such as 10 or more years like myself. So get ready everyone for a really exciting dividend stock investing video. Welcome to PPC Ian. This is Dividend Stock Investing for Everyone. All right, everyone. So I want to get started with Orion Office. What is this company all about? This is a company that was formed after the merger, the acquisition of Realty Income and V REIT. These are two large publicly traded REITs that combine forces. And then they spun off Orion Office, which was the suburban office properties. They thought that was a unique and distinct enough business that they ought to spin it off. Realty Income is one of my favorite dividend stocks of all time. It's a real estate investment trust. They pay dividends on a monthly basis. It's coined the monthly dividend company. I was up really late last night going through some interesting things about Realty Income in their investor presentation. They have a world-class investor presentation, which I will link to in the pinned comment below. I will also link to the pinned comment to the Orion Office investor presentation. I think both of these investor presentations are world-class. But when I was going through Realty Income, I also went into a deep dive on Orion, and I want to share some things about Orion. So Orion, they are basically a triple net lease company. They own offices throughout the United States and they lease it back to the tenants in the form of long-term leases. They are focused on suburban growth markets. They're not talking about large urban centers or large cities like San Francisco. They're looking more in the suburban markets that are growing very quickly as millennials and others flee cities and start establishing themselves in more suburban communities. Personally, I think that's where the future of office is, where office real estate is, and so I like how Orion is aligning themselves with those trends. I wanna go into a few slides about Orion, then I wanna get into some numbers. So as you can see on the screen in front of you right now, the first thing that I wanna share is Orion REIT story. So again, the um, Orion was formed as a result of a spinoff from Realty Income and uh, VREIT, and um, they are comprised of office uh, properties. This is the office properties from those two juggernauts in the 
REIT space, our now Orion office. And it gave investors a pure play net lease office investment opportunity. I think they spun it off honestly because these types of office properties traded a lower multiple than the rest of their portfolios. And so it was to basically separate some of the lower multiple properties. It's 100% office exposure. I like the fact that it's in suburban markets. I like the fact that they are focused on a low leverage balance sheet and modest growth over long periods of time. I think the suburban real estate market is probably going to perform quite well for Orion. And one of the reasons I like Orion right now is it's a very small company. It's a spinoff. A lot of people are just dumping their shares, but I don't think they see the full value there. And I will get into that in the numbers. So on the next slide, as you can see in front of you right now, I want to show you the um, robust industry and tenant diversification. These are all slides from the Orion office REIT presentation investment presentation, which I am linking to in the pinned comment below, but I'm choosing just a few of my favorite slides right now that I want to go through. And so you can see their top 10 tenant industries. We have healthcare, government, insurance, financial institutions, software, capital goods, so on and so forth. They're broadly diversified across industries, and you can see their tenants and their credit rating of their tenants are top notch. And you can see they have GSA, Merrill Lynch, Cigna, Highmark uh, Insurance Company, RSA, which is a security company, Walgreens, CVS Health. Now, these are not Walgreens and CVS Health um, stores. Those probably still fall under realty income. These would be the office facilities, the suburban office facilities where back office people who work at Walgreens, maybe in accounting, would sit. So on and so forth. You can see that they have a broadly diversified base of tenants and industries. And these are the types of companies that are not going anywhere anytime soon, in my humble opinion. They will need offices to run their businesses. Let's keep going. As you can see on the screen in front of you right now, the next slide that I wanted to point out is the trends with suburban net lease. You can see that this is honestly a pretty cluttered slide. It's got a lot going on in this slide, but there are companies out there that are making big moves into the suburban office markets. And Orion believes that suburban office is the future as opposed to urban office. And I would tend to agree, and it's really nice to see Apple on the list as well. So they're just showing some recent corporate office announcements of Credit Karma, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Oracle. I mean, right here in the Silicon Valley, that's where I'm filming the video right now, Oracle had their major headquarters uh, right near here in uh, Redwood Shores, but um, they're going ahead and they're moving away from that office. And as you can see on the slide I just presented, they're moving a lot of their operations to Austin, Texas. And so it's really interesting to see these trends. And I think that Orion is well positioned to capitalize on these trends. Now, um, before we even get going further, what do you think about Orion? Share your thoughts in the comments below. I always read all of the comments. I try to respond to most of them. They mean the world to me. And if you enjoy the video so far, don't forget to smash the like button. It means the world to me. It helps my videos reach more people on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe as well. I have more videos on the way all the time. I know my videos haven't been as frequent lately, but it's been quite busy with the move. And so right now I'm here in the Silicon Valley. We're still moving stuff all over. And uh, thank you for bearing with me as I do the uh, move, get all of that complete. And I'm glad I'm able to present this video today. These are my favorite types of videos. I'm focused on core stocks these days. I think Home Depot, for example, is a screaming buy for my personal portfolio. And I've asked the community and my patrons over on Patreon to even Hold, hold me accountable if I'm swaying from my core stocks too much. But honestly, with Orion, this is going to be one of those cases where I might sway from core stocks a little when I pick up uh, a few more shares of Orion here because I'm seeing some value. And that's what I want to get to in the presentation next. And so what I want to do next is share some analysis. And I have some few more slides that I'm going to share along the way as well. And so as you can see on the screen in front of you right now, this is an analysis I put together last night. I did this um, in Excel. 
And what you can see is on the left-hand side, I have Orion. On the right-hand side, I have some comps from Realty Income, the company that kind of spawned off or uh, Orion was spun off from. Orion is trading at 1431, and so the um, shares have been trading down. Realty Income, by contrast, has been trending up and doing really well. Now, um, Orion recently had an earnings announcement and they basically gave some forecasts. They said in 2022, core funds from operations guidance on the low end is $1.66 and on the high end $1.74. Please keep in mind that with a real estate investment trust, net earnings do not mean too much. With depreciation and amortization that is um, part of the real estate industry, it can really throw off gap numbers, but the depreciation is not a real loss of value. It is a tax accounting metric that is uh, actually beneficial to uh, real estate investors and real estate investment trusts, but it can really make analyzing these companies difficult. And so that's why a lot of investors like to look at FFO or funds from operations. That's the best proxy of how well these companies are really doing in terms of cash flow that can be used or spun off to investors, to REIT unit holders like myself. And so as you can see on the screen in front of you right now, what I wanna share with you is if I take the price and I divide it by the FFO, from the uh, low FFO and the high from the guidance range, I'm getting a price to FFO of about 8.6, uh, between 8.2 and 8.6. And what that is best uh, equated to is a PE ratio. The PE ratio, if you will, price divided by FFO, because this is a real estate investment trust, is an eight. When we know most of the world-class dividend stocks right now are trading quite a bit higher than that. And in fact, as you can see on the right-hand side of the screen where I have realty income, it's trading at 70, 90. I actually am estimating their forward FFO. They didn't really, I couldn't find that in their earnings release, but I know they growed their adjusted F AFFO uh, or they grew their adjusted AFFO by 5% approximately last year. And so I'm saying they do that again in 2022. They grow it 5% uh, on top of 2021. If I take uh, 2021 AFFO for realty income, multiply by 1.05, I get 377. Long story short, if I take the price and I divide by that forecasted AFFO uh, for 2022, I get a price divided by AFFO for realty income of 18.81. So on the one hand, Orion is trading in the eights. Realty income on the other hand is more than double that. It's trading at 18. Now, are suburban office facilities as valuable as the types of real estate that realty income owns? Probably not, but should it be trading at a price divided by FFO of eight versus 18? Probably not. I think Orion is undervalued here. Now on the topic of uh, realty income, just a fun tidbit. I was going through their investor deck last night. Again, I'll link to that in the pinned comment. It's amazing, time well spent. I love reading these annual reports, these decks, these investor presentations. But as you can see on the screen right now, I didn't even know about this, but I happened across some interesting news. And uh, just for you, uh, those of you out there that don't know, Realty Income actually announces a 1.7 billion sale leaseback of um, Encore Boston Harbor through partnership with Wynn Resorts. So they now own this um, amazing property, uh, Boston Harbor uh, Encore Resort, uh, and they're in partnership with a win. This was really fascinating to see. And so for those of you that don't understand triple net lease or don't understand the market that Realty Income and now Orion play in, basically what they do is they own the real estate, but in terms of kind of day-to-day -day management of the real estate, the um, tenant improvements, the uh, you know keeping it clean, kind of uh, doing anything really as it pertains to the real estate, they put that on the tenants. So the tenants have to do everything, but um, this is a valid business model. It's a valuable business model because companies like Wynn that might have a lot of real estate on their balance sheet and they need to raise cash or capital, they can sell the real estate to companies like uh, Realty Income, but they can still use the real estate. They lease it back from Realty Income. So it offers a lot of value both to the company selling the real estate but obviously also to Realty Income and Orion because they get to own this amazing real estate and collect all this rent while not even having to like actively manage it on a day-to-day -day basis. They don't have to worry about utilities. They don't have to worry about 
property tax. They don't have to worry about tenant improvements. The tenant has to deal with all of that while they just collect the checks. And so it's a pretty cool business model. They've amassed these really large portfolios and the terms are pretty long with the win one, for example, with realty income, it's a 30 year term with a 30 year extension provision as well. And so it's really exciting to see what's happening there. But I digress. I want to go back to the numbers as you can see on the screen right now with um, Orion, they're paying, they just announced a dividend or a distribution per quarter. This is a, um, this is not a qualified dividend. This is a real estate investment trust. So it's a distribution tax differently. It's important to consult your licensed tax advisor and to work on taxes as it pertains to these investments. REITs are a little different than um, qualified dividends from a company like the Home Depot. But um, usually there's some element of ordinary income and there's some element of return of capital in these distributions. But the dividend they announced was only 10 cents per quarter. And per year, that's 40 cents or a starting dividend yield of 2.8%. Now that's not very exciting because as you can see on the right hand side of the screen with realty income, they're paying uh, 0.247 per month their monthly dividend company, or about 2.964 per year, or a starting yield of 4.18%. So whereas Orion is trading dirt cheap, they're really not paying that much of a dividend yet. But here's what got me excited. When I started looking through their numbers, they had a metric in Q4 called um, funds available for distribution. I'd never really seen this before, and so I started Googling it. What does this mean, FAD, funds available for distribution? I came across a website that I frequent all the time called um, Investopedia. If you have not checked it out, that's where you can learn a lot about investing. They have all these great articles and definitions. But as you can see in front of you right now, this is something I pulled from Investopedia. And what's so exciting is it says understanding funds available from distribution. Uh, basically what it says is that a REIT uh, by law has to pay out 90% of its taxable income to investors. But we know that taxable income is not necessarily the benchmark of really how much they can pay. So there's a, a non-GAAP measure called funds available for distribution and it shows how much the REIT can actually afford to pay to investors. And so what we just saw on the prior screen, the analysis that I did, which I'm gonna show right now again in front of you, you can see funds available for distribution uh, in Q4 was 30 cents. Wow, if we assume that all the quarters are gonna be similar to Q4 and we analyze that, we get $1.20. And that makes sense because $1.20 is the annualized funds available for distribution. And we know that the core um, FFO range is gonna be $1.66 to $1.74. So it makes sense. Like, hey, funds from operation are in that 166, 174 range. And yeah, they've got about $1.20 of that that is available for distribution. Well, if I take the funds available for distribution and I divide it by the current share price of 1431, I get a funds available for distribution yield of 8.4%. So this is where I think a lot of investors are going wrong with this company. They think a few things. They think one, suburban office isn't a good market to be in. I disagree. Share in the comments below what you think, but I think suburban market um, office is here to stay. And I think it's only gonna grow. I don't think people wanna be in their house forever. And I think a lot of jobs in the United States, they cannot afford for people to be at home. They need to be in an office. Now, urban offices in downtown cities like New York and San Francisco, I wouldn't wanna be in those markets. Those office facilities are very expensive. And those types of employees that often work in those offices are very high earners. Oftentimes they get more flexibility. They kind of call the shots. But when you're in more suburban markets, and you've got more of a normal office job, you don't get to call the shots quite as much as the high powered executives in downtown New York. And so what I'm just saying here, I think this market is here to stay. And I think a lot of people get that wrong. I think what else people get wrong with Orion is they think it's bad because realty income spun it off. I'd be better selling that and then buying back realty income. Hey, maybe those people are right. I don't think so. I'm more of a Peter Lynch investor where I think these spinoffs have a lot of value. And I think a lot of people just dump the shares, mutual funds dump the shares, index funds dump the shares just because they have to, they don't want such a small position. And so I think a lot of people are missing this. They think the dividend uh, distribution yield is somewhere around uh, two point percent which is what it is now but I think it'll go up to eight percent probably within the next five years and so good yield on cost opportunity there now again this is not qualified this is uh, a REIT real estate investment trust as you can see on the screen in front of you right now I did some more analysis uh, basically on the right hand side of the screen you can see I was just wondering well with realty income how much of their AFFO do they pay out if I take their dividends which is 2.964 per year annualized and I divide by their uh, forward AFFO 
they're paying out about 78.6% of AFFO, forward AFFO. If I take 78.6 and I take the midpoint of the Orion estimates, I actually get a um, amount of $1.34, which is higher than the annualized funds available for distribution. And so what this tells me is if they do a comp to realty income and they end up paying out 78.6% um, of kind of the midpoint of that core FFO, I get a 9.3% di dividend distribution yield. And so I think that the yield on cost could be anywhere from 8 to 9%, say in the next five years. They're starting slow because they're figuring some stuff out as a newly traded, uh, publicly traded REIT, but I think it'll improve over time. Worth noting, the debt at Orion is 647 million, and they're targeting a debt to EBITDA of 5.5 to 6.5. Um, realty income is at a 5.3, and so it seems that they're targeting a similar debt to EBITDA as realty income over time. Honestly, for this particular analysis here, I didn't dig into balance sheet and debt too much. This is kind of my first look at Orion since it's been spun off. I'm seeing enough here that I like that I'll probably pick up a little. I know I know I should only be focused on core stocks right now. This is going to be an exception. I'm not going to go too crazy, but I want a little more Orion. I just want it. It's kind of like Beatrice Kindrel. I like the spinoffs. I'm willing to buy them and hold them. I don't care if everyone hates them for another five years. I'm in them for 20 years or more. And so I'll just buy a little more, wait it out, see what happens. But again, my focus this year does have to be core stocks like Home Depot because that's where my portfolio is going. But I'm not going to uh, dismiss an opportunity when I see it. And that's what I believe O'Brien is. And I just like being in that sector as well. I see promise in suburban office. I think that's an interesting space to have some allocation to in the portfolio. And we all know the powers of real estate. And in an inflationary environment, we especially know how valuable real estate can be. As we keep going, check it out in front of you right now. Another thing I like about Orion is it gives me some diversification in the stock portfolio from market capitalization standpoint. It's trading at $810 million. That's a smaller company, whereas realty income is trading at $41.9 billion. So these are two completely different animals. Uh, Orion is a small cap company, but that also gives them quite a bit of opportunity to grow the company over time. Now, I wanna close out with something in the video today, and this is something that's potentially a red flag. Check it out on the screen right now. We all know that um, Realty Income recently um, merged with a company called VREIT and uh, then spun off Orion. But uh, something I found back from 2020 is the SEC, uh, this is actually from the SEC website, they settled fraud charges with VREIT. And so maybe uh, that actually helped Realty Income kind of get it, get them on the cheap or make this merger happen on the cheap. It was a uh, effective merger so far, I would say, for Realty Income uh, shareholders or unit holders. That being said, I don't like seeing things like this. I like the companies that I own to operate at higher ethical standards. But basically uh, what it said here is allegedly the um, SEC was saying they were overstating their numbers. And so not everything is always perfect. And so we shall see, we should watch. Uh, when you see something like this, you, you get you thinking, it gets you wondering. Um, this is what, uh, what I'm reading on the SEC website. And so something to keep in mind for Realty Income and Orion, because they both have kind of a VREIT component to them in terms of probably team members and um, also facilities, uh, properties. And so something that I happened across, no, no investment is a 100% kind of all green lights. There's always one or two things that pops up. That's one of the ones that I saw um, in my first look at Orion. So let me know in the comments below what you think about this opportunity. Um, I'll be buying some. It'll be interesting or I'll be adding. This is going to be the first time I'm adding all I own so far, just the ones that were spun off from Realty Income. And I can't wait to see you in the comments below. Please don't forget to smash the like button. I always appreciate that. It means the world. It really helps me out. It's a busy time for me and my family. It's been insane with everything going on. And by smashing the like button, it just, it really helps. Um, I'm just gonna say, and the subscriptions as well, it really means the world. It's so difficult to get these videos produced these days, but I, I gotta keep going. Uh, I love the community. And uh, by the way, if you're not on my Patreon already, check it out in the pinned comment below. I got some really good stuff going over on at 
Patreon. And I'm grateful for all my patrons. I just did a new video there the other day. Literally, I filmed it in my car in the Burger King parking lot at night. That's how busy I have been. That was the only time in the day I could make it happen, but I gotta make it happen for you guys on YouTube and on Patreon. Uh, I appreciate it. Now I will um, do my disclosure and disclaimer in terms of a full disclosure. I own the stocks mentioned today. I am long realty income ticker O. I am long Orion, O-N-L. I am long Kindrel, K-D. Beatrice, VTRS. I am long Carrier, C-A-R-R, -R, Otis, O-T-I-S, Raytheon Technologies, RTX, which is another stock I've been buying. I am long IBM, ticker IBM, Pfizer, ticker PFE, Apple, ticker AAPL, and the Home Depot, ticker HD. I am long those stocks in my personal dividend stock portfolio. Before I go today, in terms of a friendly disclaimer, today's video is not investment advice. I'm not a licensed investment advisor. Today's video, which is for your fun and entertainment, if you're gonna go out and invest in the stock market or anywhere else, please consult your licensed financial advisor. First, I'm just sharing my journey here on YouTube for fun and entertainment. Also, this video today, it's not tax advice. I'm not a licensed tax advisor. I'm just sharing my journey for fun and entertainment, and it's possible to lose money in the stock market. Um, thank you, everyone, for watching today. I'll see you in the comments. I'll see you in the next video. I hope you have a wonderful day.